Number nine, among the solubility rules previously discussed is the statement, all chlorides are soluble except for these four exceptions, HD2Cl2, AgCl, PbCl2, and CuCl. Then we have letter B, write the expression for the equilibrium constant for the reaction represent by this equation. So Pb2 plus plus 2Cl minus aqueous yields PbCl2 solid. And then is the KC values greater than one, less than one, or equal to one? And then we'll explain our answer. Okay, so for the first part, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rewrite this bigger just so that I can use it. So I got PB2 plus, and that's aqueous, plus 2Cl minus, and that's aqueous. And then this comes to equilibrium at some point of PBCl2 solid. Okie dokie. So let's first write out our equilibrium constant. There's a general formula for this. It's this right here. I'm just gonna put it over here. And I always call it as just products divided by reactants. It's as simple as that, okay? So our Kc value, this is our equilibrium constant. It was just products divided by reactants. So. In this case, I'm just gonna say Kc equals something. It's gotta be something over something, right? Products minus reactants. Now, before we do this, there is two rules. We have to look at the states. There are three different, there's three states here, aqueous, aqueous, and solid. Only a few states are allowed in this equation. And the ones that are allowed are aqueous, oh, AG. AQ, and gas. So aqueous and gases are allowed. No solids and no liquids. So right off the bat, I'm going to say, okay, this one's good. I'll put it like a little check mark here. This one's good. I'll put a little check mark here. But uh-oh, this is a solid. Solids are not allowed to be in this equation. So I'm just gonna put like an X here, or if you want, just get rid of the whole thing. It's up to you. I'll just put an X here because I'm gonna talk about this later. So just look at your like little check marks, okay? So now, products divided by reactants. Well, this one we just said it can't go in this equation. So when you can't put something, you just put a one over it, okay? So basically, you're like filling the void. There's nothing that's going to be on the top of this fraction. So I just put a 1, all right? So I'm going to have a 1 divided by something. Now let's see. These two are able to be in the KC equation. So I'm just going to work from left to right. Remember, the brackets means concentration, molarity. So it's whatever the molarity was of PB, 2 plus, and when you have two, uh, two reactants coming together, it's multiplication. So it'd be like times the next bracket, but I'm just gonna put them together. And now I have Cl minus, right? So I'm gonna say that, Cl minus. And now here comes the next thing. You always raise the products and the reactants by their coefficients. Now, since this one we don't even care about, I don't care about this one, but let's look at the coefficients here. There was no number in front of this, which means that it was a one, but there was a two here, right? You gotta raise these to their coefficients. But since anything raised by one is just itself, I don't really have to put a one next to the PB. But for the CL, I have to put a two raised to that coefficient. So the the chlorine will be squared. And now, finally, we have our answer. And maybe I will just do this. Beautiful. So this is our answer for the Kc value. Now, let's go on to the next part. Okay, so we got that. Let me just erase this. Now we're saying, okay, is this Kc value, is it gonna be greater than one, less than one, or roughly around one? Now I put down what that actually means. 
So the Kc value is always predetermined, and it's a standard number for a certain reaction. If you have a Kc value of less than 1, you have more reactants at equilibrium, which means that when these come together, you're going to have way more of these two guys than this. If the Kc is then greater than 1, you favor the product side, which means that you have way more of this than these two. And then, if the Kc is equal to 1, products are roughly equal to the reactants, which means that these would roughly be the same. Now, the answer comes from what is going on here. Now, they said that all chlorides are soluble except for these four exceptions. And here it is. PBCl2 is one of the exceptions. This means that this will not be soluble. This will be insoluble. And remember, when something is insoluble, it's literally a solid, right? It's a precipitate. Precipitate. Once you form a precipitate, chances are you ain't going back. So once this is formed, it's very hard to break it up into its ions again. It wants to stay a solid. It's not going to dissolve in water. So if you have this solid, do you think that you would have more of these than your reactants? Yeah. Insoluble compounds, they don't break down, which means that once you collect these, or once you collect PBCl2, your chances are you're not going back. So I know that I'm going to have way more of PBCl2 than I do of my ions. And if I have more products, that's this scenario right here. That means that my Kc would have to be greater than 1. So that answers that. And then explain your answer is literally what I just said, all about PBCl2 being insoluble, and those precipitates do not break down. So once you collect it, that's, you're going to, you know, you're not going to go back. All right. So hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video and I will see you in future videos. All right. Good luck on your tests and quizzes and see you later. Okay. Bye.